second stop on the Walmart FLW Tour provided a first look at the massive waters of Louisiana's Atchafalaya Basin. The top professional anglers in the world gathered in the sportsman's paradise this week, each looking for a $100,000 payday. The top 10 earned a slot in today's final round where big fish can bring big money. All the on-the-water excitement of our 10 finalists starts right now on FLW Outdoors. City. These people have been great all week long. Not only these people have been great, the fishing also has been fantastic. Very unusual here in the basin, but boy, it has been a great week. And folks know they're fishing around here. We got some knowledgeable local people. We got some great anglers on stage now. In a few minutes, we'll see which one of them caught enough fish to win a hundred thousand dollars. These anglers have had to deal with some special tricks. They've had to pull some things out of their bag and their repertoire. They've had to navigate some very tough canals and streams, just finding their way around and then finding these big fish in some tidal water situations. They've certainly met their challenges. Absolutely. These guys here have survived all the way through and we'll have a real shootout here today. $100,000 to win and more importantly, another step on that road to Richmond, Virginia. What you're going to see in just a few moments, we will recap the exciting action from earlier this week and then we will introduce you to our 10 finalists today and then we'll start bringing in the big fish from the Atchafalaya Basin and then we'll have our shootout style weigh in. Then one of these anglers will hoist the big check, $100,000, a day he will not forget. When we come back, we will begin to see how this tournament unfolded. We'll recap the exciting first two days of action here in the Atchafalaya Basin. I'm kind of Welcome back to Morgan City. This is the second stop on the Walmart FLW Tour. A very enthusiastic crowd and some very excited anglers as well because each of these anglers has earned some valuable points. And these season points, very crucial this year because the road to Richmond, Virginia paved with $1.5 million at the season-ending Jacobs Cup Championship in September. Including a $500,000 first place prize to the champion there. It's always great to win one of these events, but Charlie, it always points for the anglers toward the championship. They want that championship trophy, the Jacobs Cup, and the half million dollars. It would mean a lot to get there. And being in the finals here is one good step on the road to Richmond. And one good step getting to the road to Richmond was getting to the finals of this tournament. Taylor, how did our anglers do that? Well, let's talk about days one and two because the keys are day one and two. 175 anglers started, and then it's down to these 10 to fish the final two days. But the first two days are critical. Here's a look back at days one and two on the Atchafalaya Basin. Day one. A good map and a good GPS. Mandatory equipment for the Atchafalaya Basin. The biggest body of water the FLW Tour will see. It's so big that you've got to pick one or two confidence areas that are far apart, hopefully, and learn them inside out. It's just like a big maze out there, and you just got to hope you find the right canal. But how far was the right canal? Some anglers would run more than two hours to get to their spots. Osaka, Japan's Marizo Shimizu found his in the Bayou Pigeon oil field. Flipping a brush hog, Shimizu boated a two-pounder and was on his way to a five-fish limit. James Shockey was a few canals away, recording a personal milestone. His first keeper is an FLW Pro. He came flipping a black and blue jig. And if you've ever wondered what it sounds like when a graphite rod breaks in half, it sounds just like that. Shockey grabbed another rod and went on to weigh three fish. But the best catch in that area came from Pennsylvania's Dave Lefebvre. He already had a five and a two pounder in the live well when he caught a short fish. Lefebvre went on to boat nearly 16 pounds and finished the day in fifth place. I started catching them a little bit better 
later, but the bigger, the two best ones I caught were right off the bat this morning. And uh, they, they never really did bite like they've been biting in practice. Gary Klein had a big first day as well, almost 17 pounds and second place in the standings. You know, but I was catching all my fish off a of dead wood, you know, flipping a rattleback jig, a black blue rattleback jig, what I like to do. And, you know, the whole key to fishing in an area like this is you have to be in an area that's got fish. But second year pro JT Kenny set the pace on day one. His 17 pounds, two ounces included a five and a half pounder that was big bass of the day. His performance brought him the media spotlight and the lead. I caught my first three on a uh, Berkeley jig, and as the sun really started warming the water up, I noticed the water temperature was coming up. The fish started moving high, and I started throwing a spinner bait, really burning it past the stumps. Jeffalaya Base Day Two. Sunrise came on day two with many anglers wondering where they'd stumbled the day before. A big majority failed to weigh a limit, and now those within reach of the top ten had to figure out how to make up ground. Kevin Van Dam stood in 25th. I've got a couple spots that I've caught a few fish, and you, you just got to go back when the bite's this tough and you get a few, you know, you know there ought to be some more. So, But fishing can be the most frustrating of sports. Just ask Tennessee pro Dwayne Horton. <laughs> he just missed what he thought was a five-pounder. Horton later caught that fish and made a move on the leaderboard. Not far away, North Carolina's Chris Elliott got into what appeared to be a nice fish, but it failed to measure 14 inches, and Elliott finished 45th. The bite did improve on day two. 50 anglers caught limits. Wes Thomas employed a little local magic as he vaulted from eighth to second with his lucky Mardi Gras beads. And every time I'd catch a fish yesterday, he said, feeding beads is working, man. <laughs> the fish have pulled back, and the, most of my fish I'm catching, you know, four or five feet off the grass line. A lot of guys are still fishing right on the grass line. I go right in behind him and catch fish. The most consistent angler over the first two days also turned out to be the leader. FLW rookie Dave Lefevre turned in his second straight 15-12 and took the lead on what seemed like pure emotion. I'm 32 years old now, and since I've been 19 years old, this is what I wanted to do for a living. And, and uh, you know, obviously this is the best moment of my life right now, and hopefully I'll have the best one tomorrow and a better one than that the next day, hopefully. Joining Lefevre and Thomas in the finals, Bill Chapman. Gary Klein, Andre Moore, JT Kenny, Jack Bell, Paul Elias, Dwayne Horton, and Jimmy Millsap. For the record, the Snickers' big bass on day two belonged to Chip Harrison and weighed 514. And on the co-angler side, local favorite Brad Rod Rieg of Pier Park, Louisiana, had a massive 14-pound limit and took home the $15,000 top prize. When we come back, we'll meet the finalists and their fish. FLW Outdoors is brought Morgan City, Louisiana, everybody. This crowd has been phenomenal. They have been with us every step of the way. We would love to come back next year. And with a reception like that, how can we not? Thank you very much, Morgan City. This has been phenomenal. Well, as we mentioned, our field of professionals was 175 strong when this tournament began. We soon cut ourselves down to 10 finalists. They made what we call the Poland Cut. Let's meet our finalists right now. Our first finalist is a longtime veteran of the FLW Tour EverStart Series and the BFL. He is one of four former FLW champions in today's field, having won $100,000 on Kerr Lake in 1997. He's in his sixth FLW Top 10, currently in 10th place from Knoxville, Tennessee, Dwayne Horton. Our next finalist is in his eighth season on the FLW Tour. He earned a slot in his second FLW Top 10, thanks to a 15-pound stringer on day two. Currently in ninth place from Kane, Pennsylvania, Jack Bell. Yeah. 
Our next finalist has moved up the ranks rapidly in each of his three seasons on the FLW Tour, culminating with a 12th place finish at last year's Tour Championship. He's in his first top 10 thanks to back-to-back 15-pound -back stringers. Currently in eighth place and just over eight pounds off the lead from Hanover, Indiana, Wes Thomas. Our next finalist won last year's Walmart Open and is one of the rising stars on the FLW Tour. He finished sixth in the season standings in his first full year on the tour. His five fish limit yesterday put him within six pounds, four ounces of the lead. Currently in seventh place from Scottsdale, Arizona, Andre Moore. Finalist is a tournament veteran who is a two-time FLW champion and in his 11th top 10. His day one weight of 16 pounds, 10 ounces, third best of the tournament. Six pounds off the lead, he's stalking for a third FLW championship. Currently in sixth place from Weatherford, Texas, Gary Klein. Our next finalist is another FLW champion, having won at Lake Okeechobee in 2002. He's back in the top 10 for the first time since and was our day one leader with 17 pounds, two ounces. Currently in fifth place, less than six pounds off the lead from Frostburg, Maryland, J.T. Kenny. <laughs> Finalist is competing in just his second FLW event. He rose rapidly through the Everstart Series and the BFL, where he finished ninth in last year's All-American. His two-day total of 31 and a half pounds, best in the field. In fourth place, four pounds, seven ounces off the lead from Erie, Pennsylvania, Dave LaFever. <laughs> Our next finalist has competed in five BFL divisions and the Eastern Everstart Series. He's in his third FLW Top 10, thanks to improving his stringer size each day. Currently just three pounds, six ounces off the lead, and in third place from Canton, Georgia, Jimmy Millsaps. Our next finalist is the only angler to catch at least 15 pounds each day of this tournament, and his weight has improved with each stringer. He trails our leader by just one pound, nine ounces. Currently in second place from Salt Rock, West Virginia, Bill Chapman. Final finalist is another FLW tournament veteran. He surged to the top of the leaderboard with his largest stringer of the tournament on day three. He's competing in his fourth FLW final round and looking for his first win. Currently in first place from Pachuta, Mississippi, Paul Elias. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, here are your 10 finalists here in the second event of the FLW Tour. When we come back, we will begin to see how these anglers got to where they are, the lead some have, and the gaps others must overcome. Day three recap is coming up when we come back on FLW Outdoors. Welcome back to FLW Outdoors, everybody, and the first day of the final round. Our field of 175 pros has now been cut to 10, and they are strewn all about this Atchafalaya Basin. If you'd like to get a good feel for what it's like to navigate all of these massive and intricate cuts and runs, one of our pros, Jim Nolan, said it best. He said it's like taking a plate of spaghetti and dumping it on the floor. When you look down, there's your map. It's just that difficult. We're here at one of these canals with Fuji Pro, Wes Thomas. We'll talk to him in just a moment. But first, Taylor Carr is a few noodles north with Dave LaFever. That's tournament leader Dave LaFever, and he is south of Zigzag Canal with two fish in the boat. Dave, how'd you catch your fish this morning? Um, I'm starting off with a tube, a smaller bait, every day just to try to get a limit. So I'm sticking to that today, too. And then once I get my five, I'm switching over to a jig. Ooh, they're eating it today. That's a, that's a, that's a first, that is the first fish that had it that deep in two days. Good one, good one. I think it's a keeper, yeah, it'll keep. That's a good sign. 
they've been just nipping at it. Those first two really hit it and hung on. As a newcomer, you've outfished guys like Kevin Van Dam, Larry Nixon, and Rick Klum. That's pretty heady stuff right there. Um, those three guys you just mentioned are three of my, you know, I mean, I'm their biggest fan, and, and along with Gary Klein. And it's been so far, I mean, the most unbelievable experience of my life. Um, fishing against a couple of my longtime heroes made to cut, and it's it, it's really hard to balance. Um, you know, enjoying the moment, and and but at the same time trying to capitalize and 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 do what I need to do to try to win this thing. It's 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 a real hard balance, I'll tell you. Watch out, Dave Lefebvre. Here comes one of your heroes. That's Gary Klein going on a run of three fish in 20 minutes. The first two about 60 seconds apart, all on a black and blue rattleback jig and on water with a big depth variation, very different than most of the basin. Uh, area in here has been dredged, so you have a lot of deep water. There's a lot of 20, 25 foot water out there. The rim of this is about four foot, boat sitting in three, and this gets up in just a big flat. And I just feel that these fish are staging, uh, getting ready to move in here to spawn. Klein's three fish totaled about six pounds and gave him the lead. But Paul Elias was about to catch fire. Fishing very shallow and almost inaccessible water, Elias alternated between a buzz bait and a spinner bait. It was the spinnerbait that gave him his third fish and the lead. Perfect. Yes. Oh, yes, son. We yeah. came after right there. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yes. Look at that. Fall out of it. Woo -hoo. Thank you, Lord. Nice. Thank you. Thank you. Elias wasn't through. His fourth fish came seven minutes later, and his fifth seven minutes after that. In the span of 34 <laughs> minutes, he'd gone from zero to 17 pounds and exploded into the lead. But a few miles away at Big Bayou Mallet, Jimmy Millsaps had his spinnerbait working, and he was on his fourth fish for a total of 10 pounds. There's a little grass out there. It's about three foot out from those trees. Under, I'm slowing it down just enough to hit it. He got his limit at 10.51, and with 12 pounds in the live well, plenty of time to fish, and a pattern that was working, he was poised to make a run at Elias' lead. So was J.T. Kenny. When he boated his fourth fish, that gave him 11 pounds and kept him near the top. In angler speak, only three hours into the final round, they were whacking him, with Elias in front, followed by Millsaps, Kenny, Klein, and Lefebvre. Elsewhere, Jack Bell had landed his first keeper, and Wes Thomas was catching nothing, except an unfortunate jig to the head from co-editor Richard Strother. Hang on, there's plenty of fishing still to come. FLW Outdoors is brought to you by... <laughs> oh, I can't even believe it. And welcome back to FLW Outdoors. We're on Louisiana's Atchafalaya Basin. It's the second stop of the FLW Tour. There are 10 finalists fanned out across the basin now. And keep in mind, the finals, a two-day total weight competition. So if an angler does poorly today, it doesn't knock him out. But at all costs, they want to avoid a bad day for it. Just after 11 a.m., Arizona's Andre Moore is attempting a run. His second keeper of the day is a three-pounder caught on a tube he created called the Boom Boom. 45 minutes later, he's working the same tube and pulling in another three-pounder. Yeehaw! Let's check in on our leader, Paul Elias, who is looking for the big fish to cull with, but is finding a lot of two to three pounders. As we check our leaderboard heading into the fifth hour of competition, Paul Elias holds a five-pound lead over the surging Jimmy Millsaps. Gary Klein is in third, followed by J.T. Kenny and Dave Lefevre. It's about 40 minutes from launch now. This is Fuji Pro Wes Thomas. And Wes, you've been on them all week. Two days of 15 plus pound stringers, and you're right back where your hot spot's been. Uh, I hope it stays hot, let's put it that way. I feel like we can catch them in here if we just take our time and don't get in a rush. There's no boat traffic in here today. There's been several people in here fishing every day that I've been in here. So by not having any boat traffic in here, I think I can kind of pick my time and just really take my time, I, I feel like both of us can catch some fish in here. Well, let's talk about uh, the lures you're using and what's been working for you so far this week. Pitching plastics uh, and jigs and tubes, that's my three main baits. 
Uh, I've been doing a little bit of cranking and a little bit of spinner baiting at, at time. But uh, this, this canal that we're in is six, seven, eight foot deep out here in the middle. Comes right up and makes a, a pretty good little lift right up into about two or three foot of water. A lot of stumps, a lot of vegetation in here, a lot of stumps that you can't really see. And I've been finding that not all the fish are right up tight. I've been uh, pitching up in there and then popping it out two or three times and the, a lot of the better fish have been right on that break. A lot of the guys that were fishing in here didn't catch as many fish as I did. I thought they all fished real close to the cover all the time and didn't kind of sit out and fish away from the cover just a little bit. We're gonna get down to business here. We've been playing. <clears throat> We got them right where we want them. Most sports fans at this time would be panicking. But we're not even close to panic yet. I think we got them right where we want them. By 12.30, all other finalists have a keeper in the boat except Thomas. So forgive the Fuji Pro for some well-deserved jubilation when number one finally ends the drought. Hallelujah! <laughs> there is a God! <laughs> That's what it sounds like when nearly five hours of shutout fishing come to an end. Whee! Good gosh, you don't know how much better I feel. You can't believe. And this is what it sounds like when Thomas catches another keeper just three minutes later. Oh, yes, oh baby! Thomas would land four keepers in the final three hours, and he was happy with the quantity but the lack of quality cost him in the standings. I put a know who's your warping on him, son. Will you take him off the hook by hooking? <laughs> by midday, West Virginian Bill Chapman may have felt somewhat snake pit. He entered the final round with the third best total weight, but had only two fish for six pounds in his live well just before one o'clock. However, a new area produced familiar results. Big fish. Thank you, Lord, thank you. About 15 minutes later, Chapman landed his largest of the day. This four pounder would keep Chapman well within striking distance of the leader and ready for a charge at the championship. Where is that net? Good one, good one, good one, quick, 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 quick. Also charging the rookie from Pennsylvania, Dave Lefevre added a three pounder, which allowed him to call up to the 13 pound mark. Now competing in just his second FLW event, he did learn one distasteful lesson. All right, that's what I knew right there. Ooh, I've seen him do that on TV. <laughs> Didn't know it tasted that bad. One last check of Jimmy Millsaps reveals his largest catch of the day just before time to come back to the weigh-in. A four-pounder brought a smile to the Georgia angler's face and a third-place position at the standings. Oh, bad, <laughs> he looks like he swallowed a football. There were a few fat footballs as the finalists arrived at the weigh-in tent for Friday's results. Paul Elias turned in a total of 17 pounds, 5 ounces to take a 1 pound, 9 ounce lead over Bill Chapman, who added his third 15 pound stringer of the tournament. Jimmy Millsaps and Dave Lefevre were within 5 pounds of Elias' lead. Not too far behind, J.T. Kenny, Gary Klein, and Andre Bourne. Wes Thomas turned in four keepers for just over 9 pounds, and Jack Bell and Dwayne Horton rounded out the top 10. mentioned our 10 finalists competed yesterday and here are the weights and here are your leaders Paul Elias out in front 17 pounds five ounces just one pound nine ounces behind Bill Chapman then it's Jimmy Millsats Jay Lefevre and JT Kenny that's your top five your bottom five reads like this Gary Klein Andre Moore Wes Thomas Jack Bell and Dwayne Horton now let me explain a little bit about what's going to take place we have our shootout style weigh-in. As we mentioned, Paul Elias is out in front. Dwayne Horton will be our first angler. He will need to bring up enough fish to take over the lead to stay in this race, and every succeeding angler must be able to take the lead or they are out. Ladies and gentlemen, we have met the anglers. Now let's meet their fish. Dwayne Horton was the first to weigh and the first to weigh out. He landed only one keeper, just over three and a half pounds. I take, I take five of them. 
I bet you if I catch five of them, I wouldn't be ten. Family pro Jack Bell was next. He also was unable to take over Paul Elias' lead, weighing in three fish at just under six and a half pounds. Bell found success with a slow spinnerbait presentation. This bait, you just sort of pull it along. You don't even have to reel that thing. You know, pull it. And that seems to be the bite, the bite that they want. Sometimes you have to reel them. Sometimes you have to make them flutter. And sometimes you just sort of pull them with a rod and don't reel. Atta boy. Fuji Pro Wes Thomas found another strand of lucky beads at his boat Saturday morning. The beads boasted five fish. Thomas caught five and briefly took the lead until Andre Moore bested Thomas Martin. Gosh! It ain't no justice, Bubba. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we have weighed out three of our finalists. Seven anglers remain. Andre Moore is our new leader when we come back. We will troll a little bit closer toward crowning a champion here in the Atchafalaya Basin. Don't go away, everybody. <laughs> FLW Outdoor. Welcome back to the second event of the Walmart FLW Tour. Here is your leaderboard. Andre Moore out in front, 21 pounds, 12 ounces. Trailing is Wes Thomas, then Paul Elias, Bill Chapman, and Jimmy Millsap. That is your top five. Then it's Jack Bell, Dave Lefevre, JT Kenny, Gary Klein, and Dwayne Horton. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we will continue our shootout style way. And next up, Gary Klein, who needs to bring up enough fish to take over the lead from Andre Moore. Gary Klein brought his fish to the scales, still second guessing a decision he'd made on where to fish that day. It doesn't take long, boy. You can get me in an area that's got them. Yeah, buddy. And I can catch them. Thing is, finding that area, so. Look at the size of that spot. That's two. It's 11.30. We've got about an hour and a half. Execute. I don't know what else to do. I mean, I want to catch them on a jig. They're usually better quality fish. I just, uh, right now I'm kicking myself for not coming in here right off the bat. And that was kind of my game plan. I was going to try to start out and fish fresh water, and I did. Klein took two more keepers from that area, but he was one fish short of a limit and finished in sixth place. With Klein out, JT Kenny took his shot at the top, but the former Okeechobee champion produced just three fish. Just like Klein, JT's area slowed down, but it was good to be back in an FLW final round. JT Kenny's one of the young guns on the FLW tour. He won at Lake Okeechobee last year. JT, you're back in the top 10 this year and within striking distance of another title. How does this feel? It definitely feels good to be back here. And, and this, is, this is my style of fishing, getting back in this real shallow water and, and really beating every piece of cover and trying to pick the fish out of here. And, it just it suits my style real well. Tell me a little bit about the order of your presentation. I see you're going with different rods at different times. Do you have a certain order that you're going for when you hit a new spot? I see some areas that the water's too muddy to see where the fish are spawning. But every time I see an area, a little pocket in the grass, or a place where some you see some small fish, uh, like bass fry, you know, small bass that are just hatched when, you, when I see those move along the bank. I'll pick up that gambler lizard and throw it in there. That's a, a lizard's a great bait to be throwing uh, around bedding fish. Just for some reason, though, they really eat a lizard when, when a fish are bedding. And uh, so every time, I, like I said, I think when I see a, a potential area for a bed, I'm throwing that lizard in there. But most of the time, I'm just gonna throw this spinner bait, just try to pick off some active fish first thing this morning in here. With JT's departure, five anglers were out, five still in. Dave Lefebvre then took over. His four fish up the top weight to 24 pounds, one ounce. Jimmy Millsap used all five of his fish to take the lead to 26.8. But when Bill Chapman's five fish advanced the top mark to pass 28 pounds, Millsap was out. Man, these fish are strong, Lisa. I was fixing to tell you that's that three pounder. There's that good one.
What kind of fish? I need I need a limit of those, and I'm gonna try to catch that one I've been trying to catch for five days. <laughs> But Millsaps never got that fish, ending up with 12-8 on day four and in fourth place. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we are down to our final four anglers. When we come back, we will see the first fish from our tournament leader, Paul Elias, as we continue our way in. Don't go away. We'll be right back. Good city, everybody. Here is your leaderboard. Bill Chapman out on top, 28 pounds, one ounce. He's followed by Jimmy Millsaps, who has already weighed out at 26 and a half pounds. Then there's Dave Lefevre, who is still alive. Andre Moore, who still is, is alive as well. And Gary Klein rounds out your top five. All righty, we will continue on with our way in. Four anglers remain. Our leader is Bill Chapman. The leader heading into today's action, however, is Paul Elias, and he is bringing up fish now. Paul weighed in 17 pounds, five ounces yesterday. That was the largest stringer of this tournament so far. He trails our new leader by 10 pounds and 13 ounces. 10, 13 is the mark to beat for Paul Elias to be able to retake the lead and stay in the game. He's loading up right now. Oh, maybe there's, uh, maybe there's some fortune there. Here comes Paul. Again, 10 pounds, 13 ounces is what we're looking for. 10, 13 will put Paul into the lead. It's fish number one. Two pounder there, reaching for number two. That's a better fish there, fish number two. Here is number three, fish number three. We'll check our weight here. In the eight and a half pound range, we'll need at least one more like this. Fish number four. All right, we need 10 pounds. 13 ounces. 13 ounces. We have four fish here that weigh 11 pounds, 13 ounces, a new liter by pound. All right. Paul Elias has retaken his spot on top of the leaderboard, taking it away from Bill Chapman, who has weighed out all five fish. He finishes with a total weight of 28 pounds and one ounce. You did a great job, Bill. We got video of you out there on the basin fishing here all week long. Let's check it out here on the... We're near Wash Machine Canal, an area that actually has no name on this map. And this is Bill Chapman, already two fish in the boat. That's a good start, Bill. It's it surprised me. I normally don't get bit till about 9, 9.30 in here, but the two I got earlier are gifts. You keep fishing now. We'll just talk while you fish. Those fish came on back-to-back -back cast. How'd that feel? Back-to-back -back cast. Another good one. I'm not used to that. <laughs> <laughs> now, there's, there's not, don't seem to be a whole lot of fish in here, but when I get bit, it's usually a good fish. All right. Don't take me long to figure out they like a blue lizard. Chapman caught his third fish an hour later, giving him an encouraging nine pounds before 10 a.m. Two more like that, and Paul Elias is gonna have to sweat. Man. Chapman later switched to a spinning outfit and flipped a tube to catch his fourth fish, but never got the five or six pounder he knew he'd need to make a run at the leader, despite some admirable optimism. All right, big fish of the tournament right here. I used to fish with an old guy that I'd say stuff like that to, and he'd tell me, he admired my confidence, he just questioned my judgment. <laughs> Chapman's 15-12 was the second biggest sack of day four, but not enough to catch the leader. Bill Chapman from Salt Rock, West Virginia. Let's give him a round of applause. All right, we're down to three final anglers. Each of our three remaining finalists have already weighed in four fish. Next up comes Andre Moore out of Scottsdale, Arizona. He's weighed in 21 pounds and 12 ounces, trails our leader by seven pounds and six ounces. That's oh. how much that final fish, fish must weigh. Way. He's got to have six. a monster to take over the lead. Andre Moore, again, the winner of the Walmart Open, Bentonville, Arkansas, needs a seven pound. Six ounces to take the lead. Let's see if he's got one monster. 
Mm, good fish, but not quite seven six. A beautiful fish for Andre weighs in at three pounds, four ounces. Beautiful fish, but not enough, Andre. No, not enough. Uh, you know, yesterday I just kind of stumbled a little bit, but uh, heck, I'm happy just to be up. You caught a limit today. Let's watch you out there in action. This is Andre Moore, one of the top young anglers on the FLW Tour. He has made quite a name for himself with his sight fishing ability. However, in these waters, hasn't been much sight fishing to go on at all. You've shown some of your versatility to get into the top ten in this one, Andre. Yeah, a little bit. I mean, I'm not fortunate enough every time I go bass fishing to be able to sight fish. I can't really uh, pay the bills if I uh, only catch them one way. That's a good one. In sight fishing, seeing is believing, and Andre saw early success with a four-pounder caught on his homemade tube. The Western angler turned in the third best weight of day four, one ounce shy of 14 pounds. Moore needed a 10-pounder to get into the championship hunt. He got one, it just wasn't a bass, it was a drum. Dude, look at the size of that thing. <laughs> Andre Moore, let's give him a great round of applause. We're down to two. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, our leader is Paul Elias with a weight of 29 pounds, two ounces. Will Paul Elias be our champion or the challenger, Dave Lefevre? We will find out when we come back on FLW Outdoors. <laughs> FLW Outdoors is brought to you by U.S. Bank, home of the five-star service guarantee. We're here with Dave Lefevre. He's sitting here just a little bit on the nervous side. Dave, your very first top 10 in the FLW Tour. Is this any different from the Everstart series? Um, yeah, of course, man. This is like the biggest show on television. I mean, I, I'm, yeah, I, I can't even believe I'm here. I'm still like, there's so many of my heroes on this stage right now. It's like overwhelming. I just can't even believe it. Been fun all week? Yeah, it's been fun. Uh, lots of Pepto-Bismol and uh, <laughs> I'm doing all right. All right, you have done all right all week long. Let's watch you out there on the basin in action. We've got you in the video out there. And tell us, this: what are you doing out there today? Um, today, I, I stuck with the tube all day. Uh, I've been fishing a jig a little bit, but I, I decided to stick with the tube. I changed uh, styles and colors and uh, sizes and everything. I mean, I was using a lot bigger line today and flipping a lot more than I, than I had been. This one, Tough out there. Yeah, this one here was scared the daylights out of me. It is buried in there. At least you can tell it's a bass. Look at me, I look like a cat. Sneaking up on that. <laughs> yeah, I got him though. You got that one. I'll tell you, that is nerve wracking time though, Dave. I know also there's other people here in the audience that, that are neighbors, that are nervous too. Almost as nervous or maybe more nervous than you are because out in the audience we have your family. Taylor Carr. And this is Ann Lefebvre and Mitchell. Now Dave has seemed kind of nervous really since day one when he fished well. What's going on in that head of his? Well, I think more than nerves, it's excitement right now at this moment. <laughs> uh, he's just, it's so exciting. He's following his dream. And more than I can say to anybody is, you know, follow your dreams. It's just so exciting. We uh, use the phrase dream come true a lot, but I get the sense with him it really would be a dream come true. It would be a dream come true. We're just so blessed to be in the top 10. And thank you. And and Mitchell in the Lefebvre cheering section. Alrighty, I'm here with our tournament leader, Paul Elias. Now, I want to know, what was it like last night as you went to bed knowing that you had the lead for your first FLW championship? Well, I was, I was a little nervous, you know, I, uh, but I was real busy too, so that kind of that absorbed a lot of it. And uh, by the time I hit the bed, I was ready to hit the bed. Uh, uh, I'm getting on up there in years, so when I, when I can hit that sack, I want to hit it, you know. But uh, I slept pretty good, uh, actually, for four hours. I woke up at three o'clock, <laughs> but uh, I was looking forward to the day. I felt like I could do pretty good. It's a special time for Paul Elias and a special time for the Elias family as well. I understand your wife is here with us today. Yes, my lovely wife is here and I have several of my lovely daughters here. My son is here. I have all kind of relatives here. And I believe Taylor Carr is with her out in the audience. This is Christy Elias all the way from Pachuta, Mississippi. And you weren't planning to be here, were you? No, I've been sick all week. 
there was a phone call made? Last night, Pa called and told me that he had caught me a Valentine fish and that he was in the lead, so I decided we were coming. Isn't that sweet, a Valentine fish? <laughs> I love you. <laughs> Christy, if, if Paul wins this event, how would it change his life and your life? Well, this will be the first time that since Paul and I have been married, that I've been on the tournament trail with him, that he could bring this on home. And so I came to watch him bring it on home. Let's see what happens back on stage at Carlton Wing. OK, well, let's take a look now at your day out on the water and see how we brought it home today. Tell us what was working for you today as we see your video here. Well, actually, I'd been catching all my fish on a man spinnerbait. And uh, I, uh, I had to change up and, and go to a buzz bait today. Uh, to, to catch two or three of my better fish. And, but I was fishing, you know, fast moving baits the whole time. I did catch one fish on a, on a tube bait. Oh yeah, that was, I had that happen a lot today. <laughs> a lot of them missed it too, but. Top waters are fun. Yeah, they are. We had an exciting day. <laughs> <laughs> All righty, well, Paul Elias is our leader. Five pounds and one ounces, or one ounce, ahead of our challenger, Dave Lefevre. We'll keep Paul to your boat, but you be ready because your fifth and final fish is coming up very shortly. Dave Lefevre, it is time now to bring up your fish. Dave is our challenger, trailing by five pounds and one ounce. Five one is the mark to beat to take the lead. If Dave is able to do so, we will bring up Paul Elias. If Dave is unable to do so, Paul Elias will be our champion. We are down to the moment of truth. Once again, we're looking for five pounds and one ounce to continue this. Dave Lefevre for his <laughs> limit fish. The Ever Start champion now, FLW Touring Pro, reaches in for his limit fish. Needs to be a good one. It is a dandy. Needs five pounds, one ounce. This one weighs in at Three pounds, 13 ounces, not enough. Paul Elias is our champion. Still with fish to weigh. Paul yeah. Elias, let's bring it up, get a total weight. Little icing on the cake for our champion, Paul Elias. His final fish weighs in at five pounds, even a champion, Paul Elias. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Charlie, I, I tell you what, man, it's. It's been almost five years since I've won a, a major tournament, and uh, I tell you, it starts working on your head a little bit. You start thinking, well, maybe I, you know, maybe I just don't have the mechanics to do this anymore. I've been around the fish to do it, but uh, everything went well this week, and uh, I tell you, uh, the Lord smiled on me, and and I just executed a lot better than I have been. And we have a check here from Walmart for our champion, one hundred thousand dollars richer, Paul Elias. Ladies and gentlemen, Paul Elias is your champion right here in the Atchafalaya Basin. Don't forget, you can get all the information on this tournament and the rest of the FLW Outdoors family on FLWOutdoors.com. And be sure to tune in next week on FLW Outdoors. Legend Larry Nixon joins our champion and other finalists as we recap the exciting action here in the Atchafalaya Basin. Thanks for watching, everybody, on FLW Outdoors. Ooh, what's that? I missed that one. He thumped it. I couldn't help but jerk.